Today we continue on with our NHL season previews. We're taking a look through the Atlantic Division first. Today we're looking at the Ottawa Senators. They made a lot of big moves this offseason through free agency and through trade. Is it enough to get themselves into the playoffs? We'll talk about that coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, today we're taking a look at the Ottawa Senators and previewing their upcoming 22-23 NHL season. It's fair to say that GM Pierre Dorian has made a lot of noise this offseason. The Senators are certainly one of the uh, top teams, I think you could say, that did the best, most improvements throughout the offseason. There's a probably fair to say between uh, Pierre Dorian and Brad Tree Living, I think they were probably the, the two GMs that made the most significant moves uh, and may have made the, the best uh, changes to their team. But only time will tell, I guess, to see how those changes work out. But at least going into the year, that's how things appear and it's an opinion that many people certainly share. So if you're new to this series, we're going to quickly recap last year, just look at some key team metrics, and then we're going to take a look at how this team has changed. Uh, with the, the players that are not with us anymore, so your key subtractions, your key additions, who are some prospects that could get into the lineup and make an impact this year. Take a look at the projected lineup going into opening night, and then of course take a look at any questions we feel this team needs to answer and what are the big things facing them to get ready to start this season. So first up, let's recap the 21-22 season for the Ottawa Senators. Now, of course, they were near the bottom of the basement last year. They were not overly high in the standings. Uh, they finished seventh in the Atlantic Division with a record of 33-42-7 and seven for 73 points. This team has been rebuilding for the past three to four years, um, and we've seen some improvements last year and the year before, but overall, there were still a lot of lingering issues that needed to be addressed, which I think Pierre Dorian has not maybe not all of it, but certainly addressed a big chunk of it, which we'll get into here shortly. They ended up scoring 227 goals last year, 26th best in the NHL, allowing 266, 22nd best. That's certainly more respectable than the prior last couple of seasons. The power play became respectable at 19.3 percent uh, for 20th best. The PK was certainly respectable as well at 80.3 percent for 13th best. So ideally, you want to add your PP and your PK numbers add up to at least 100, uh, so that puts us at 99.6, so they're pretty much right there, a few more minor tweaks, I think this team could have a lethal power play this year, and really move up in those rankings, PK will be a little bit different, because we're going to see some different personnel, obviously this team missed the playoffs last year, they have missed the playoffs now for four consecutive years, dating back to their last appearance being 2017, when they went on an unexpected magical run to the Eastern Conference Final and were one goal away from going to the Stanley Cup to play the Nashville Predators. But instead, they unfortunately lost in double overtime in Game 7 in that Eastern Conference Final. And Senators fans have been brokenhearted ever since. But hey, times are changing. Uh, we saw what we call the Summer of Pierre this year. Um, they're starting to spend money. Season tickets are going up. And things are trending much, much better than they were in the last few years. Of course, DJ Smith enters his fourth season. I do think it's fair to say that uh, he's done a pretty good job and I think he's earned a lot of respect. But I do think it's also fair to say that he, four years in, with all the changes that Dorian's made, DJ Smith is going to have some pressure on him. And if we do, for any reason, end up with an underperforming team in the first 20, 30 games of the season, I can see there maybe, maybe being a coaching change. I don't necessarily think he's on the hot seat right now. But I just think that there's going to be a little bit added pressure going through a rebuild. They weren't expected to be overly good. Uh, you know, there was patience for the kids. And now th those kids are getting a lot better. They're a lot more experienced. And they've added some good veterans. And this team should be much better. And if they're not, that's going to fall on the coach. So we'll just have to see how this goes. I don't expect a bad start. But if it does happen, uh, that's where Pierre and the Senators organization is going to be focusing their attention will be on coaching. Of course, Dior, Dorian's now been the GM for quite some time. Uh, they say it's been almost, it was always part of the plan that it was around this time when they would start to spend. Uh, of course, the owner, Eugene Melnick, passed away earlier this year. Some feel that uh, since he's passed, that obviously with his daughters at the helm now, um, that that's a big part of why things are changing is they were able to open the wallets and uh, spend some money. And regardless, I know, like I said, a lot of people say that that was Eugene's plan all along. Regardless if it was or it wasn't, there's been a lot that's happened with this team. They have plans in place now for a new downtown arena, uh, which is trending 
very positively that's you know looking very optimistically that that could be in place uh you know and hopefully be open in probably two or three years three years more more likely uh, but at least they got some good work done uh, with local authorities to make that happen so that's well underway which is good to see they've spent some money on some long-term contracts for their kids and at the same time brought in some key talent outside of the organization so they had a hell of an off season and let's take a look at how things look now who are the subtractions though who is no longer an ottawa senator that was in the past uh, for the past season so of course you had colin white who was a, a buyout candidate which we all talked about at the end of the year not a huge surprise there of course colin white uh, was a cheaper buyout given that he was still in an RFA status. So it was a one-third buyout. Colin White never, unfortunately, lived up to expectations. A lot of that had to do with injury, and he's now with the Florida Panthers. We'll see if he can find a fresh start there. Uh, they ended up trading Connor Brown. That was a bit of a cap move because of all the other wingers that came in. Uh, he's now in Washington. Uh, Tyler Ennis is a, a UFA. It was not brought back. Same with Chris Tierney. Michael Delzato, of course. Uh, via buyout he's gone too Adam Gaudet was not brought back and same with Victor Mete they traded goalie Philip Gustafson uh, which brought us another goaltender to Ottawa and then of course Matt Murray was sent in a big trade to the Maple Leafs and then Zach Senishin a minor league player for the most part uh, came over from Boston he was not re-signed by the Senators either now who are the key additions what did Pierre Dorian bring into this organization this season well it started at the draft with Alex Debrinkin, a big trade with the Chicago Blackhawks, moving their first round pick. Uh, it, the, the compensation going to the Blackhawks was, I think, way less than a lot of people expect it. And Debrinkin, who is a proven 40 goal scorer, should be a tremendous addition to the top six for the Ottawa Senators. Then goes out in free agency and signs Claude Giroux, the hometown player, comes back after a long stint as captain of the Philadelphia Flyers and a brief stint with the Florida Panthers trying to win the Stanley Cup. There was many that were convinced uh, last year that Drew was likely to want to go home to Ottawa, but then there were some that were quite skeptical saying, well, if he doesn't get a Stanley Cup this year, why would he go to Ottawa? He's going to want to chase a cup, and even though the Sens are getting better, they're not really close yet. Um, but obviously he felt that that was most important, and to be honest, I do wonder in the next three or four years, while he's likely going to be playing there, they very well could get themselves into that conversation of things keep trending in this direction of course then they pulled off another uh trade which was caught a lot of people off guard trading philip gustafson to the minnesota wild for cam talbot of course talbot wasn't pleased with flurry sticking around wanted more of an opportunity so they saw a chance to bring him to ottawa of course you got tyler mott who was a fairly recent signing here in the last couple of days by the sense uh obviously that's a real big addition to really boost the bottom six and obviously help the penalty killing out Obviously, the PK was respectable last year, 13th best in the league. But you take away Connor Brown and you take away Nick Paul, who was traded at the deadline. They needed somebody to come in here to have a good impact there that way. And Mott can be one of those guys. Uh, of course, he you know, throws a lot of hits, blocks a lot of shots. And it can be a real good grinder for your bottom six, well-respected player. They also brought back Jace Harwalock, who had a brief stint with the team before uh, on a short-term one-year deal uh, around league minimum, so nothing major there. And, of course, they have a couple of players coming on PTOs or additions, but they're not guaranteed to stick around. And that's former Senator Derek Broussard, who's now 35, looking for a chance to keep his NHL career going. Uh, so he'll come in for an opportunity to battle for a, a bottom six role. Likely, I mean, he's normally a center, but he does play wing as well. And then they also brought in Michael Del Cole on a PTO. Of course, Del Cole has a prior relationship with dj smith from their time in oshawa in the ohl um i'm not sure doug cole really has much to give he's 26 years old but has never really materialized at the nhl level after being a number five overall pick in his draft year but i do think that maybe broussard has a chance to uh, to grab a one-year contract at 750 perhaps Dal Cole, I, I would be surprised that if he did at this point but the senators obviously want to bring in players to create some competition um, and obviously at the same time improve their depth in the bottom six, and they've certainly done that. Now, uh, who are some prospects that could possibly make this lineup or at least see significant NHL time this year? Well, for one, Jake Sanderson uh, certainly stands out as the top prospect in the organization. Many expect Sanderson to not only get NHL time, but to likely play a top four role on a consistent basis. So obviously expected to be a star defenseman in the future. We'll see how the rookie uh, progresses this year. And another player I expect to see a decent amount of time would be Ridley Gregg. Now Ridley Gregg, a former first round pick just a couple of years ago, has had a tremendous 
couple of years of uh, battling. He's had a chance to play in the minors. He had a chance to play in the minor leagues uh, during COVID when the uh, Canadian Junior Hockey wasn't playing. He's played for Team Canada at the World Juniors. He's had a little bit of NHL time. Uh, this guy, to me, is, is going to probably have to start as a bottom six guy, but he can play anywhere in your lineup. And I think he's going to be a, a potential real solid player for them down the road. I do think he's definitely going to get some NHL action. Hard to say how much, though. Uh, Robbie Herventi is another player to watch. Um, obviously, the Finn uh, should have a, a solid year. Likely spent most of it in Belleville. Uh, you get another call-up option, and the forward group could be Igor Sokolov, who's had limited NHL time, but a real solid American Hockey League season last year. Uh, Jacob Bernard Docker and Lassie Thompson will certainly be battling for uh, at least some NHL time, depending on how the team faces with injuries or whatnot. Um, they both potentially play a role in the team's future. Hard to say uh, how training camp goes, but I do expect them to at least see some action this year for sure. And goalie Matt Sogard, who appears to be the goalie of the future for the franchise, uh, will be the number three guy in the organization, be the starter in Belleville, and will be a call-up option should they run into any goaltending injuries this season. So what does that make your lineup look like? Well, one big question mark right now that we don't know around the team for projecting the roster is, is Alex Formanton going to be under contract? He remains unsigned as I record this video. Uh, obviously, today is September the 15th, so there, there's still time. But I know with all the players they brought in between, you know, your Tyler Mott recently, then your PTOs, I do wonder if a lot of that was uh, building up your depth because of that uncertainty. We don't know where things stand on the contract. Makes me wonder if they're miles apart and are expecting a holdout. So we'll have to see where that goes. Uh, but right now, your top line, your top six really is pretty much set. Uh, you can really call either of them line one, in my opinion. But you got Josh Norris, Brady Kachuk, and, and Drake Batherson. Uh, no doubt, played a lot together last year. Uh, we'll be aligned together to start and certainly have a you know potential to tear things up again. Uh, you get Timmy Stutzla uh, playing with Alex Debrinkit and Claude Giroux. They've been doing um, a lot of Playing, playing together during their, uh, I guess, I don't know what you want to call them, but their informal skates ahead of the season, waiting for camp to open, and they've looked good together. I've seen some uh, video footage, and reports are that uh, there seems, seems to be some good chemistry there. I think Debrinkit, being your 40-goal guy in the past, is going to benefit greatly. Uh, players like Stutzla and Giroux are great playmakers, so I think we're going to see a fantastic uh, line there. Then, of course, you got Shane Pinto, Likely playing in number three center spot with Matthew Joseph, who was a nice acquisition from Tampa last year. And probably Tyler Mott at this point. Looks like he might play on the third line in the spot that would normally be occupied by Alex Formanton. And then your fourth line, it's hard to say how it's going to go, but it could be a combination of Gambrell, uh, Parker Kelly, and Austin Watson perhaps. But now you have Mark Kostelik in there as well, who probably got a good chunk of games as your fourth line center last year. And I think he's the... The future fourth line center for sure. I don't know if he is to start the year, but he'll be in the mix. And then, like I said, you got your PTO guys like Broussard. Could he find his way onto this team? Ridley Gregg, will he find his way on that team? That fourth line, I think there's going to be lots of competition and might look a little bit different. I do expect Parker Kelly to be there. Um, Watson's in his last year. He could even, even end up being the 13th forward. That's a possibility. I think Gambrell is going to have lots of competition. Same with Costellic. So we'll have to see how things work out. But there's lots of of competition, which is very healthy and good for this team. And it'll have a better bottom six, I think, than they have in the last few years. On the blue line, it's expected to see Thomas Shabbat paired with Artem Zub as your top pair uh, with Jake Sanderson likely playing your second pair with Travis Hamanick and Nick Holden and Eric Brandstrom likely being your third pair. Now, we haven't talked at all about, all, at all about Nikita Zaitsev, but he's not expected to be on this team. All projections by all media, and you hear the Dorian talk and DJ Smith talk. There's been no mention of this guy, even though he's tactically still on the team. I know they've been trying to trade him. There's no secret there. They were obviously actively looking to make a Jacob Chikrin trade, and he was going to be going to Arizona as part of that. Um, I don't know how that's looking. It doesn't look probable at this point. Uh, if a trade does not materialize, I do wonder if they'll put him through waivers and he could find himself playing in Belleville. I really... Don't know how that's going to work out, but Zaitsev not projected to be in your opening night roster. Of course, your goaltending tandem will be Cam Talbot and Anton Forsberg. I think we're going to see more of a 1A, 1B scenario. Um, hard to say. I know Talbot was not really pleased about in that, being in that similar spot in Minnesota. So I don't know. I think Cam Talbot, he's in a contract year, and he's looking to prove him something here. So I wouldn't be shocked if Talbot plays well enough to be the starter and maybe we see Forsberg be more of a backup. Either way, I think the goaltending is 
the, hopefully it looks like it's the best it's been in the last few years with Matt Murray really struggling hardcore during his time in Ottawa. Gustafson had some bright moments, but had some struggles too. Hopefully we'll see this, this the position stabilized and just give the team a chance to win a lot of nights. That was a big part of this issue with this team in the last couple of years. Lots of nights. They did well, had a good start, scored some goals, but then they'd have a letdown. Uh, goaltending has been a big problem there. So hopefully it's stable now and they can move forward. But can the Senators challenge for playoffs? I absolutely think they can. Same thing I said about Detroit. I think Detroit's going to be greatly improved this year as well. Um, I'm not sure they've improved as much as Ottawa, though. And I think you're going to see it's possible at least teams like Boston and Florida, to me, are very much wild card teams to, you know, how they're going to be. I think we could see some regression. Um, at least it's possible. It's not a guarantee by any means because teams like Boston, you can never count them out. You know they're going to find a way. So it's not a given by any means. But I can see Ottawa finishing anywhere from that fourth, fifth, or sixth range. Um, I would think six is probably less likely. I think probably fifth. So they're moving up in the standings regardless. You want to see them play meaningful games down the stretch and be in the playoff race. Right down to the wire is at least what you'd like to see this year. I think to really call it a successful season. Playoffs would be great. But I, if they don't make it, I don't think it's a lost year. Uh, I think it's it's going to be tough. It's a tough division. And if teams like Florida and Boston find a way to hang on and just nudge them out, then I, I still think it's a successful season for Ottawa. And they still have lots of reason to be happy. And we'll be able to take bigger steps again the year after. So we'll see how things go. Let me know what your thoughts are on the Ottawa Senators. Can they make the playoffs? I think the odds are, are decent. We could see playoff hockey in the nation's capital for the first time in four years this season let me know your thoughts down in the comments we'll discuss further of course stay tuned for plenty more teams coming in this preview series if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe and stick around we'll keep you up to date with the latest news rumors and analysis on all 32 nhl teams thank you for watching and i'll catch you next time